Destiny 2 is in bad shape. And since you clicked on this video, then you already know what we're about to get into. The community's worst fears have been realized. Bungie is out of good ideas. And really, it's a shame because I love Destiny. I've been playing this game since D1's beta, and I couldn't in good conscience quit the game before giving Bungie one last chance to make things right. What we're going to cover today are all the things we can do to fix what's broken in Destiny 2, while also adding in new and interesting ideas to the game to bring it more life. But before we get started, I want you to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I want to make some things clear. First, this is not a hate Bungie video. Even though I am pretty frustrated with Bungie, this is not that type of video. The only things you should take away from this video are constructive criticisms and new ideas. Second, you may not like my ideas, but I am approaching this video as a Hail Mary attempt for Bungie. This is by no means a realistic video about what Bungie can do to fix Destiny 2. I am not a game developer, but I am a fan and a longtime player of Destiny, and these are what I want to see implemented in the game. With that being said, what I'm going to talk about in this video are solutions that Bungie can do to put their game in a better position for success. Now, I will admit right here and now that my solutions and ideas are definitely not quote unquote realistic, but I'd rather shoot for the stars and land on the moon than shoot for the moon and land back on Earth. What I mean by that is, if one is going to try and make a successful video game, then why not at least try to make the best one ever made? instead of what we have right now, which is complacency and excuses. With that being said, we have 10 things to talk about in this video. Number one, PVP overhaul. Number two, Gambit overhaul. Number three, activity guides. Number four, seasonal content. Number five, storytelling. Number six, mystery activities, exploration, and trading. Number seven, custom cosmetics. Number eight, monetization. Number nine, event overhauls. Number 10, the future of destiny. And we will have timestamps down below. So if you like to skip to a certain part of the video, you'll be able to do so. Now let's get started with the crucible. Probably the most talked about while also being the most neglected part of destiny Two, is the crucible. Okay. So like I've been thinking about how to improve the PVP and destiny Two for a long time. And here are my ideas to make the crucible a more fun place to play in. Number one is obvious it's the maps. Now, before I played the original Destiny, I came from playing Call of Duty. And Call of Duty at the time was known not only for its gameplay, but for its maps. Bungie's excuse as to why they're not making Crucible maps is because it's too hard and too expensive. Well, I don't know what the answer to that is, Bungie, because I don't know how your studio is run. But hell, even Overwatch 2, which is a dying game, has had more maps added to its game than you have added to Destiny 2. So in my non-developer opinion, that excuse just doesn't do it for me, Bungie. You don't have the resources or the money to make at least one PvP map a year. I'm sorry, but do you really expect me to believe that when you were bought out for $3.6 billion by Sony? Last time I checked, you're not a small indie developer. You're Bungie. If you don't have the resources or the money, then go and find it. Don't tell us, the people who don't know how to develop a game or know how your studio is run. Go to investors or hell, go to Sony now that you're owned by them to get help from external developers who want to work on a multiplayer FPS game. I mean, Sony definitely wants to enter the live service market because Microsoft bought Activision, right? Get them to give you some of their development teams to help you out. I don't like the excuses, Bungie. I don't. Status. It's Joker, Skipper. I don't know the codes. Don't give me excuses. Give me results. And instead of trying to find solutions, you just tell us that it's too hard and that you've given up. Another solution would be to give the tools to make PvP maps to the players. I mean, you want it to be like Fortnite so bad, then do what Fortnite does and give the option to make custom PvP maps and the ability to share it to the players. I mean, come on, Bungie, even you did that way before Fortnite with Halo Forge. So you see, even I, a person who doesn't know how game development works, could come up with at least some solutions rather than just having excuses and that it's, quote, too hard to do. You might have gotten away with it before, Bungie, when you left Activision, but not this time. Okay, let's say that we fix the map problem and we get around two to three new maps every year. Well, what good are new maps if they're not fun to play in? And this is where we get into the fun of it all. It's time that we innovate on what a PvP map looks and feels like. So how can Bungie innovate PvP maps and modes? The answer, interactive and changing arenas. Might I say, look to the raids for inspiration. Let's walk it through. 
When I enter a Crucible map, I don't only want to be aware of the enemy team. I want to be aware of the entire environment around me. If any of you have watched The Hunger Games, I look at it similarly to the arena scene in those movies, where the playing field is always changing and adding new enemies to the scene, which forces us, the player, to adapt to the problem. I mean, how cool would it be if I'm in the middle of a gun match with a Titan, and then the Taken King pops out from the sky, and the person I was having a shootout with suddenly becomes my partner, and we have to work together to take out the Taken King from interrupting our gun match? Some light raid mechanics can be implemented to take out the Taken King while having commentary from characters like an esports commentator would do. Then, once we take out the Taken King, we're back to shooting each other again. All the while, the environments are shifting and changing all around us. Also, imagine if I'm a sniper and I'm crouching in a high position taking headshots, but then all of a sudden the floor underneath me is removed and I fall down out of the map to a lower tier where I'm surrounded by enemy dogs or thrall and will have to survive in order to escape. Another idea will be to create a PvP mode that puts a team of six players against a team of Lucent Hive. I mean, that would be so cool and interesting to have Lucent Hive in the Crucible. These types of modes and maps would keep players engaged and keep coming back for more because the enemy types would be different. Every new PvP game that you play will be special and unique. And the most important part of it all, it's fun. I'm not sure what you would call the modes, but the point is, is that it's something new that will spark life back into the game. You could also introduce challenges and items to the Crucible. Add scoreboards to the tower to see who's been absolutely destroying everyone in the Crucible that week. I mean, I'm kind of shocked that we don't have that already. Add map voting and port over Destiny 1 maps into Destiny 2. Bring a 12v12 crazy mode and add vehicles back into PvP. Have an arena where there's a crowd watching us Guardians fight it out while also seeing Shax give commentary and going absolutely crazy whenever a player pops off. Speaking of commentators, for the love of God, Bungie, I would love to hear other characters in the Crucible other than Shax for once. I want other characters in the Crucible like... Savathun, Maurasov, Ikora, Cade, the Drifter, our ghost, or even some real life people like Snoop Dogg, for example. Look, there's a lot of actors on strike right now, so I'm sure you could find some high key celebrities who are willing to work for you. Also, I got this idea from Borderlands 3, but let us have a gun of the week on sale that is tiered based for new players. These tiers will be recommended to players based on how many hours they put into the PvP. So a new player who's never been in the Crucible before will be recommended a gun that's easy to use until they've reached a certain SBM ranking and once they've reached higher skilled players, that gun basically becomes obsolete. Now these guns will only be fitted specifically for the Crucible and can give new players a head start because us hardcore players already have our god roll weapons that we take into the Crucible. And plus, I'm just tired of seeing Blue Bears using PvE fitted weapons in PvP. Okay, so let's recap. New and innovative ways you can improve and make the Crucible a more fun place to play in, which include new maps, new modes, new quality of life updates, new ideas and improvements to the content that's already there. These changes can make the Crucible playlist feel more alive and welcoming to new players, while also giving hardcore players a reason to grind in PvP. Now onto the next most neglected part of Destiny 2, Gambit. Gambit is dead. Bury it. At least that's what Bungie would like us to believe. But should it really be dead? Is there any way that we can save Gambit? Well, I can tell you that we are going to do at least the one thing that Bungie will not do, and that is try. But before we can fix Gambit, we must identify the problem. And that is, what is Gambit? Well, the idea of Gambit is merging PvE and PvP together. Sounds like a great idea. In fact, the crucible part of this video sort of implements those ideas already. But the problem that Gambit has is that it's not fun to play. Let's see what we can do to fix that. First things first, what do you think of when you think of the Drifter and Gambit? Well, for me, I think of gambling, the game of chance. Now we don't want to implement gambling into Destiny 2, but what if I told you that a better version of Gambit already exists in Destiny 2 and does it pretty well? It's called Dares of Eternity. Dares of Eternity is what Gambit tries to be, but without the PvP elements. In fact, many of us would argue that the PvP elements in Gambit are some of the worst parts of Gambit. One solution to the problem would be to merge Dares of Eternity and Gambit together and call it Gambit of Eternity. But how would that work? Well, let's see. You take the spinning wheel, aka the game of chance that Dares of Eternity introduced, and merge that into Gambit. 
One of the things that makes Dares of Eternity unique is that it sort of feels like a game show, such as Family Feud or Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Now, how can we implement the PvP aspects to that idea? Well, let's walk it through. When I enter the Gambit of Eternity playlist, I'm expecting to have fun destroying enemies and winning over the enemy team. But what if we can give the enemy team one chance to even the odds by having one guardian at random take control of the enemy's prime evil and have the player operate as a hive, taken, fallen, or cabal boss? The player will then have to make a decision to either restore a portion of the enemy's health bar or make an attempt to take out all enemy guardians in the surrounding area. It's a gamble, and that's what players should expect from the Gambit of Eternity playlist, being randomly chosen at an important point during the match and having to make a pivotal decision that could affect the outcome of the game. This is what a gamble should feel like in Destiny 2. Now, how does the player advance to the end stage of a Gambit battle without using the moats? Well, the solution to that is replace banking moats entirely. But what will we replace moats with? Well, for that, I have to reference an older seasonal activity that Bungie vaulted away and was one of my favorite activities, and that is the Menagerie. We replace banking moats as the activity to bring a primeval with the Menagerie seasonal activity from the Season of Opulence. We would integrate the spinning wheel from Dares of Eternity in the beginning of the match to determine which path the players would have to fight through to get to the prime evil boss at the end of the match. Whichever team was lucky enough to make it to the end faster than the other team will be the first to take out the prime evil. However, if the odds are so stacked against the losing team, then that is when the gambit occurs. One guardian from the losing team will be selected at random to take control of the enemy's primeval boss and make one of the two choices that we mentioned earlier. That way, it can give the losing team a chance to catch up and balance the odds. If, however, both teams reach the final primeval boss at the same time, then one guardian from both teams will be selected to control the enemy's primeval, and whoever is lucky enough to buy some more time for their team wins the match, aka the Gambit of Eternity. Well, that's it. That's all I have in the idea tank for Gambit. With that being said, let's recap. In order to save Gambit, we must rethink what the game of chance means inside of Destiny 2. We merge Dares of Eternity and Gambit together and call it Gambit of Eternity. We remove the banking moat activity with the seasonal activity from the Season of Opulence, the Menagerie, and implement the spinning wheel from Dares of Eternity to determine which path the teams take and allow players to take control of the enemy team's primeval boss. This gives replayability to the playlist and makes Gambit an actual fun activity to play in. And there you go, an attempt to at least try and fix Gambit in Destiny. Now, let's move on to activity guides. Are you a solo player or a team player? Whichever kind of player you are, I think we could all admit that Destiny's endgame content is almost impossible for a new player to understand in-game unless they have a fire team member explain it to them or have to look it up on YouTube themselves. Content such as raids, dungeons, GM nightfalls, and trials of Osiris all have mechanics and a learning curve that requires you to seek a third party in order for you to understand. Let's describe what it's like. Imagine you are a solo player and you never did a raid before. Then you are invited to a fire team to run the Taken King. Now, one of two things is going to happen to that new raid player. Either that guardian is going to be railed by his fire team members for not knowing the mechanics of said raid, or the solo player will have to look up the entire run of the raid on YouTube, which is definitely not a fun activity to do, learning how to run a raid, a dungeon, or a GM nightfall outside the game is not the same as experiencing that content yourself for the first time. So how do we solve this problem? Here's where our activity guides come in handy. First thing we do is make every raid, dungeon, Grandmaster Nightfalls accessible for solo players. How do we do that? Well, when you enter a raid, for example, as a solo player, you will be greeted by a character in game that will teach you how to achieve said activity step by step. Imagine you enter the Last Wish raid and Marosov or the Crow shows up in person, not over a radio frequency, and they're at every stage of the raid guiding you through all the steps needed to complete the phases until you've finally made it to the end of the activity and completed your first step into Destiny's endgame content. 
without having to rely on other fire team members or having to go look it up on YouTube yourself. These character guides will be available on all of Destiny's endgame content. They'll pop up in GM Nightfalls, in Dungeons, and even show up in the Crucible. I'm actually surprised that there isn't already a tutorial for new players in the Crucible because the game does not teach you how to succeed in its endgame content. The players do not have the tools to succeed in raids, dungeons, nightfalls, or even high level matches of PVP and are forced to receive abuse from very frustrated hardcore players. The activity guide is basically a tutorial mechanic that we add to Destiny 2's endgame content that will give new solo players a chance to succeed and become better at the game. And now let's move on to the seasonal content. I've been playing Destiny seasonal content since Forsaken and year after year, the seasonal activities have been getting worse and worse. However, the past four seasons in particular have just been disappointing. They're boring, exhausting, and not rewarding. Definitely not something you wanna hear from a player about your content. So how can we fix this problem? Well, for starters, every season from here on out should not be tied to an expansion's storyline. Every expansion that we get should tell a full and complete story, not piecemeal it to us over seasons. Then what should the seasonal content be, one might ask? Well, in my opinion, the whole point of a season in Destiny 2 should be to build upon the world of Destiny and its surrounding lore. There are so many interesting storylines and characters that can be told separate from the main plot line. Take a season of Destiny to explore the Dreaming City's inner political workings. Establish a council in the Dreaming City led by a new character who wants to replace Marosov as queen and wishes to operate the city as a democracy. We the player would then have a choice to either help Mara keep her kingdom from being overtaken by democracy or we help this new wizard and his council in the Dreaming City and establish a democratically run government. We can have quest lines that branch from two different sides of the story. Quests that come only from Marasov if we choose to help her side and quests that only come from the council if we decide to help them and this new wizard. If you don't want to divide the story of Destiny into two parts by having the player decide which path they want to take, then make all paths eventually lead to one conclusion. But the journey on the way there will be up to the player and whoever chooses wisely will be rewarded greatly for their decisions. Take another season of Destiny, for example, to explore the last city. I mean, there's so much potential in the tower alone that hasn't been explored since Destiny 1. Have a season where we have the opportunity to rebuild the original D1 tower, but it would require resources and items that we'll have to acquire from the last city. Introduce noodle shops, metal workshop vendors, and construction workers that we'll have to communicate with in order to rebuild the original tower and by the end of the season we the players will get to custom build our own shop in the tower where we can sell our materials that we get from off-world planets i mean there's so much potential left on the table because bungie would rather reuse assets and activities than give us something new and interesting every season let's take another season and finally bring back sparrow racing league but this time we get to build our own sparrows which will lead us to custom cosmetics, which we'll talk about later on in this video. But imagine a season where SRL is back and we have quest lines that lead us to building our own exotic sparrows pimped out with awesome cosmetics. Take inspiration from sports racing and have cool and interesting ways to utilize our sparrows in these awesome racing maps. Bring interactive and changing environments from the PVP to SRL maps. Add guns to our sparrows so that we can interact with the enemies on the track. Even have an event at the end of a racing match where six guardians have to go face to face in a boss battle and have to use all the weapons on their sparrows to win the match. And finally, take one season of Destiny and put us, the players, against evil guardians. Introduce new characters that turned away from the traveler and corrupted their light and now serve a new enemy. Not the witness or the darkness, but the devourer a new enemy that poisons guardians with necromancy and at his side is one of the original guardians. The story can take place after the fallout from the witness's battle with the traveler. The devourer seeks to control what's left in the universe and corrupt our most powerful allies. And speaking of story, let's talk about the next thing Bungie needs to improve on, the story.
Boy, oh boy, have we had problems in this department. Look, the lore that Bungie has created since Destiny 1 is amazingly interesting. The problem was never with the lore. The problem was with Bungie's delivery of said lore. For the love of God, Bungie, please stop with this over-the-com script-reading tactic of characters explaining to us what's happening in the game. This latest season, in particular, has been the most insulting. Literally just going to a destination, press a button, and just listen to characters dump dialogue of lore. You know, in storytelling, there's a piece of advice that all scriptwriters use. Show the viewer what's happening. Don't just tell them. Well, in Bungie's case, all they do season after season, expansion after expansion, is have the characters just read to us. Like, come on, Bungie, I want to feel excitement and intrigue with the plot lines. I don't want to be read a bedtime story every time I want to get into the lore of Destiny. This is not good storytelling. It's frustrating. So far, you've had people in the community deliver the lore of Destiny better than you have. I remember before the Witch Queen came out, I saw Bife's video about the origins of the Hive Sisters and the Worm Gods. Man, that was an amazing piece of lore that hyped me up before the Witch Queen, but it wasn't fully explored in that expansion. I've given you some ideas for what kinds of stories you could tell in the seasonal overhaul part of this video. Give us stories that have meaning and characters that we care about that can make us fall in love even more with the lore of destiny give us that storyline with mara solve and the council in the dreaming city let us start relationships between our guardians and the characters of destiny i want to riz up mara solve bungie please let me do that i want to go on side quests with saint 14 and go explore mercury with osiris also can we finally wrap up that lost plot line with elsie bray back in d1 when we knew her as the stranger there's a universe of stories to explore bungie and i don't want to experience boring stories with the same enemies over and over again the vex is not what i want to see after the final shape and the fact that you're not creating anything new or innovating after destiny 2's final arc is pretty disappointing we had the vex in destiny 1 we had a whole season dedicated to the vex in destiny 2 I urge you, Bungie, to think outside the box and start innovating on the story of Destiny instead of relying on reused assets and boring deliveries. Mystery Activities, Exploration, and Trading Destiny does not feel like an open world of opportunity. Instead, it feels like a chore. There's no mystery in the game, no intrigue or motivation to explore the world in Destiny. Here's one way you can introduce that back into the game. For starters, let us build our own workshops in the tower to sell materials that we collect from different planets. The reason why exploration sucks in Destiny 2 is because there's nothing interesting to do. If we could have the option to sell our resources from different planets to NPCs and players, then that would bring back the desire and farming of materials in the public spaces of your worlds. Ain't nobody loading up the EDZ just to look around and maybe get a few materials. Why? because there's nothing there to explore in the EDZ. And whenever you do collect materials, they're useless. Let's walk it through how it should be like. Let's say I just finished building my workshop in the tower. Now I need resources and materials for me to sell. Where can I get those things? Well, the game will introduce a quest line that tells me that I must acquire 100 planetary materials from each world destination. Those are Byron Bows, Dusklight Shards, Glacial Stalwarts, Helium Filaments, and Spin Metal Leaves. Once I acquire these materials, I can then sell or trade them at my workshop to other Guardians or NPCs. Imagine, as a Guardian, that I'm running out of planetary materials. I can either go and farm them, or I can stop by another player's workshop and buy them instead. This will give players a reason to explore the game's destinations and environments while also introducing trading in Destiny 2. Now, while players are exploring and farming D2's wonderful environments, they can also be met with intriguing mysteries that would unlock quests and reward the player by further revealing storylines that are connected to the planet's lore, thereby expanding the world of Destiny 2. Oh, and these quest lines won't be told to the player by reading to them. Instead, the players will get to experience these storylines and mysteries via in-game cutscenes, cinematics, or activities that will engage the player to feel like he or she is part of the world. This is full escapism in Destiny 2, and I want the player to feel like there is a world of opportunities to explore and that you never know what you might run into during your exploration. Now, let's move on to the next part of this video, and that is custom cosmetics. I have one word for you, Bungie, in regards to custom cosmetics, Starfield. 
Now, this video is being made before Starfield is released. And for all I know, that game is either going to be amazing or a complete dumpster fire. But for the sake of this video, let's say that it went well and all the things Todd Howard promised us were actually true. Well, then I want to have custom cosmetics introduced in Destiny 2. Right now, I'm showing you Starfield's custom ships and ship exploration. I mean, look at this bungee. Look at it. It's glorious and something that I've always wanted in Destiny since 2014. Custom built ships with the ability to explore and custom design the interior of our ships. This is just amazing work right here. And if this was implemented in Destiny 2, then that in and of itself is a game changer. But I don't want that to stop at just our ships. No, no, no. I want to be able to custom build my Sparrow vehicle, my Ghost, and my class items. We're shooting for the stars here, people. So this might seem too extreme of an idea for you, but I promise you, we have been convinced to accept the bottom of the barrel when it comes to innovation in Destiny 2. But I don't want to be okay with breadcrumbs anymore. I want to see Destiny reach its full potential. And if having custom cosmetics is too much of an ask, then I'm sorry to say that we have truly failed in pushing the boundaries when it comes to Destiny 2. Also, do not apply the armor synthesis system to custom cosmetics or any kind of system that will handicap the player's ability to freely customize their ships, ghosts, sparrows, and class items. Either remove the cap on armor synthesis or get rid of it entirely. Let Destiny 2 players actually feel rewarded in-game instead of asking them to succeed in the real world by asking for more money. And speaking of money, let's talk about the monetization in Destiny 2. Okay, so this has been the veil that's been covering most of our eyes for a long time. I had no idea just how bad Destiny's monetization tactics were until Astacross released his video on the matter. Now, I don't want to rehash everything Cross already said, so instead I'll leave a link in the description down below so that if you haven't seen it already, just know that I pretty much agree 100% of what was said in that video. Now, I do want to say that I think Destiny should go back to the standard $60 model that has been used for decades instead of being a free-to-play game. However, as I say that, I do realize that of everything I have said in this video, that one seems to be the most unlikely thing to happen. And so, I have a compromise to this idea. Destiny 2 can still be free-to-play, but all previous expansions and seasons and seasonal events will be migrated to one baseline price of $60. Hell, I'd even give you $70 if that didn't work for you. Let's walk it through how it would go. Imagine you're a new light player and your friend wants to run last year's expansion with you. Well, if that new player wanted to do that right now, he or she would have to spend over $300 on everything related to Destiny 2. Pretty expensive for a free-to-play game. But what if everything that Bungie releases prior to a new expansion was all under one price point of $60 or $70? That way, a new light player only has to pay for the baseline game that comes with all the previous expansions and seasons, and if they wanted to, they can pay for Bungie's newest expansion for the same price. In total, that would be either $120 or $140. A far cry from the $400 price tag that we have right now, and that would include everything Destiny 2 has to offer you. You can still have silver and paid cosmetics, but it does not intrude on the main game's monetization, nor does it take away from the creation of new cosmetics. What we want to do is to remove trade-offs and takeaways that do not improve the main game in favor of paid cosmetics. Cosmetics should not be the selling point of Destiny 2. Its rich lore, compelling storytelling, and amazing gameplay is what should be the selling point that the game has to offer. Anything afterwards is just a cherry on top. Doing this will bring a consistent value to the game year after year and will not be confusing to any new player. The new expansions will always be available for a new price, while the previous expansions will be added to the baseline game, which would only increase the value of that baseline price. This way, you can have your cake and eat it too. That's it. That's all I got in terms of monetizing Destiny 2. I will admit that it's a tricky one because Bungie does not inform us of how their studio is run, nor where the money is going to. So everything I just said could be pointless, but at least I was willing to offer you a solution. Speaking of solutions, let's see what we can do about Destiny's seasonal events. These events are not good. In fact, most of the community do not like these paid events. Why? Because they're paid events. 
They have nothing to do with compelling storytelling, interesting lore, or even innovative gameplay. Sure, we had one change in this past Guardian Games with Warlocks, Titans, and Hunters facing each other in groups, but that is but one tiny innovation in what was years of repeated activities and rewards. So, how do we fix these events? Well, let's start with the Guardian Games. What can we do that can make this event exciting? Well, for starters, let's bring factions into Destiny 2. I want Dead Orbit, New Monarchy, and the Future War Cult to be integrated and pivotal during the Guardian Games. I want factions versus factions, exotic rewards for each faction. My god, please bring back exotic class items, Bungie. These were so cool inside of Destiny 1, and I don't see why you can't do the same thing here in Destiny 2. Have cosmetic rewards tailored to each specific faction. A Dead Orbit Ghost, a New Monarchy Sparrow, a Future War Cult Ship, and apply these cosmetics to the weapons in Armor 2. Now, it's safe to say that this event will most likely be focused on PvP, and that's okay. And Implement new ideas and new modes that only happen during the Guardian Games. That way, it makes playing this event even more special because it's a time for experimentation and innovation on what the factions could mean for Destiny 2. You could even eventually port over the temporary game modes that only ran during the event into the permanent Crucible playlist, while a new and exciting mode is being tested during the Guardian Games. Now, what can we do about Solstice? Solstice, I think, should be revamped as a time of healing in the Destiny community. What I mean by that is, implement challenges that favor guardians that do the most healing. Literally, it's a time of appreciation for those who heal us when we're at our lowest. These healers go underappreciated in the game, and it will be a time to reward those players in our fire teams that carry us with their healing grenades and healing rifts. It's definitely a solar-centric event and would help players who weren't familiar with the solar subclass get used to using it. Now, Solstice also happens during the height of summer. So, introduce a new social hub like the farm was in Destiny 2 Vanilla with a beach and an Olympic stadium where players can dip into the water or play that good old football. Have new characters introduced to us so that they can enhance our time with the social hub and challenges during this event. Let us talk to lifeguards, referees, athletes, and coaches in the Olympic Stadium. Have them give us quest lines to follow and rewards to chase that will help us get to know these characters better. For instance, imagine we talk to one of these athletes in the last city, and one of the quest lines requires us to help him or her practice for the opening game. And in order to do that, we have to perform like 50 or 60 jumping jacks, push-ups, pull-ups, bench presses, or any other kind of exercises. Once we finished helping this athlete get ready for the opening game, we receive an emote of us exercising, you know, doing the push-ups and the pull-ups. That way, whenever I look at this emote, I know what I had to do to get it and how I helped this athlete get ready for the opening game night of Solstice. There's story and character behind just this one emote. Do that throughout the entire event and players will have no problem buying cosmetics if they feel like the game is rewarding them with a good time. Also, have an opening and closing night ceremony for Solstice. Open the event with a bang by attracting all the Guardians to the stadium to see some cool in-game cinematics and fun activities they can do in the stadium once it's open. And when they're done playing in the stadium, they can head over to the beach to do some cool new challenges. Not like the fishing we have right now, that's boring. Something exciting like swimming with other guardians in the ocean, maybe introduce surfing in the game, and other activities like a ninja warrior or a wipeout style contest that players can participate in and watch each other get destroyed by these challenges. Make the place fun and exciting. Speaking of things that are not exciting, let's talk about Festival of the Lost. Now, if Solstice is a time for celebration and healing, then the Festival of the Lost should be a time for thrills and excitement. I actually really like the masks that we already have in the game, but I want to be able to dress up in full costume during the event, like a full-on monster costume and let us go wild in the tower. I think this event should open the gates to the last city and actually go trick-or-treating. Introduce scare challenges like how many times I've scared Zavala or Ikora. Create a stealth mechanic that way I can sneak up behind the character and press E to scare them. Let us go to new vendors and the people of the last city to see what kind of challenges they have in store for us during this event. Create a horror house, a challenge to see how long a guardian can last before he or she runs away. 
build a small heartbeat meter that would require us to keep stable during our time in the horror house. And if we make it through the entire run, we win a small reward like a title of most stable or the least afraid. Beyond that, just go nuts, scare the players and make it feel exciting. And now let's talk about the dawning. This event is actually the least offensive of them all. I like the cosmetics that come with this event, but the activities leave more to be desired. This event should be a time for giving and thanks. Since we would have our workshops in the tower, introduce a new challenge to the player like the most giving of resources or the most generous. Have the entire Eververse store discounted for the duration of the event. Let us build snowmen and make snow angels in the tower and other destinations. Give us a challenge to unlock a literal Santa Claus outfit with the beard, the boots, and everything. To be honest, I don't know what more you can do to make this event feel more exciting. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comment section what more we can do to improve this event. But for me, that's all I got. All these events have a good premise, but the execution and delivery of these events have been disappointing and sadly has done more harm than good to the game. I'm hoping that at least some of these ideas have inspired you, Bungie, to make some changes. Now, speaking of changes, let's finally talk about this one last thing, the future of Destiny. I am not excited for the future of Destiny. Now, I will say that I am making this video before Bungie's showcase on August 22nd, and so my opinion could change once we see what Bungie has in store for us. And if it does, I'll be sure to let you all know about it. But as of right now, I am not excited for anything that we know of after the final shape. The Vex is not what I want us to be focused on after the Light and Darkness saga. They're not exciting. They're boring. Now, do they have some interesting lore? Yes. But the problem is, is that there's no face to the Vex. No threatening character that will make me excited to go face to face with the big baddie of the Vex. If anything, it just made me feel more disappointed about the future of Destiny. And with the latest State of the Game article that Bungie put out, it only solidified my decision to stop playing the game, which led me to making this video. I love Destiny, but the constant gaslighting and constant bashing of players like me that say we want more for this game has been exhausting. But even so, I wanted to make at least one attempt to show Bungie that if a random guy like me on YouTube can at least make the attempt to find some solutions to the game, then maybe they might feel inspired to do so as well. Now, I don't know the inner workings of Bungie, nor do I know how they spend their money. But what I do have are eyes, and I can see what's happening to the game as a result of what's happening over there at Bungie. You may have your solutions on how to fix Destiny, and if you do, let Bungie know about it. I have been playing Destiny since its beta, and believe me when I tell you that this is the lowest the community sentiments have ever been. I'm not hopeful for the August showcase. I'm expecting Bungie not to mention any of the community's feedback and to act like it never happened. And if they do so, then I will not be pre-ordering the final shape, nor would I be supporting Bungie financially in any way. I probably spent over $1,000 on Destiny and Destiny 2 combined, and I have pretty much reached my limit of patience and hopefulness. Now, I have given you as many solutions as I possibly can on how to fix Destiny 2, and if you think it is too much to implement it in an already bloated game, then I hope you can take these solutions into your next game, maybe a Destiny 3 even, if it ever happens. I wish I could leave you with an inspiring ray of sunshine and hope, but we are not in those times. We are like at the end of The Empire Strikes Back. Things are bleak, hopeless, and frustrating. If there's anything that we can do, it is to share our feedback and opinions to Bungie respectfully and hold them accountable for their actions. That's all we can do. And that's it from me. That's all I got for now. Thank you for watching and listening and like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you on August 22nd, hopefully with a new hope. Bye-bye.